Are you an advertiser struggling with rising costs and ads that fatigue and a lack of confidence in the strategies that you're using and the results that you're getting from your Facebook ads? Are you ready to turn the tide, to turn Facebook into something that will help you successfully work on your business and scale to the moon instead of working harder and harder to fail inside the ads manager? If so, you're in the right place. That's what today's video is all about. We're going to debunk the three biggest Facebook hacks that are destroying your performance. And sadly, these are wildly popular things promoted by a whole bunch of folks who have no idea what they're talking about. Yeah, we're gonna cover cost caps, Advantage Plus, using any sort of ABO, and promoting multiple offers or going to multiple countries. So this is gonna be amazing. Buckle up, this is gonna be a wild ride, and I hope more than anything, this lets you challenge some of the things you've been taught. And if there's a person telling you that what I'm saying here today is wrong, go back to them and ask them why what I'm saying today might not make sense. And if you can't get a straight answer in 30 seconds or less from somebody that's actively successful in their own businesses, then you should never listen to them again. Let's dive in because you deserve success. You're probably working way too hard to make far less money than you deserve. With that being said, let's take a small break and then dive into it. So before we get started, please take a moment to uh, hit like right down there. Yeah, and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos. Because honestly, you deserve success. And if we can debunk all the things that are getting in your way by the people that have no idea what they're talking about in a way that makes Facebook super easy so you can go back to working on your business instead of failing inside the ads manager, you're gonna be a lot happier and ultimately create more jobs for other people and have a better life for you and your family. And isn't that what this is all about to begin with? So yeah, that being said, let's get to it. You're using cost caps and Advantage Plus completely wrong. So the first problem with cost caps and Advantage Plus is that they over index on people that are in the mid and bottom funnel because Facebook is trying to find users that are ready to buy. Now what this really means for you is that you're getting far less incremental revenue. Your Facebook ROAS might look good, but your bank account doesn't go up because of the success of these campaigns. Another downside to this is that they create ad fatigue. They depreciate your assets by forcing your ads onto people because they may or may not be ready to buy. What you're doing is creating much worse experiences for the Facebook user as a standard operating procedure. This is going to destroy your estimated action rate, which is what Facebook uses to determine how much you should pay to reach new people. This is why your CPM is going up. This is why your funnel is shrinking. And this is why your CPAs are rising to the point where you think you might have to give up on Facebook to begin with. What you've been taught will get you a better result is actually what's destroying your opportunity and the growth potential of your business. The last thing that these are gonna do to your business is ultimately destroy your funnel growth. Because they're not letting Facebook, which is designed to amplify your business model and sit at the top of a customer journey that is built to make money. Instead of amplifying that customer journey, these tools are built to give you the best overall results, which is great for entry-level marketers. And for marketers at massive scale, where this is trying to provide slight controls. That's where you're actually supposed to use them. But if you're using it as more than 10 or 15%, max 20% of your budget, what you're doing is saying, I want Facebook to have the best overall result. And I'm willing to sacrifice the volume and opportunity that I'm gonna get from search and email and organic and CRM and community and everything else in my business so that I can make Facebook look good. Even though every single one of those other channels is far more profitable. The bottom line here is simple. When you use cost caps in Advantage Plus, you're getting a lower volume of lower quality customer that brings in less incremental revenue in a way that makes you work harder because your ads fatigue and raises your average cost of advertising because again, you're destroying your relationship with Facebook as a partner. All of that so that you get a far less stable source of traffic into your site which makes landing page testing, email testing, search campaigns, upsell testing, literally everything that happens after the click, far more difficult to test and improve. And the honest truth is, 
while you're shrinking the funnel on Facebook and destroying all those downstream metrics, if that also makes improving your LTV far more difficult and improving your conversion rate, all you're doing is making Facebook look good so that you can destroy the rest of your business. And the people that teach this don't care about the rest of your business because their motivation is to make Facebook look good. Look to everybody teaching Cost Caps and Vantage Plus, and I doubt you're gonna find a single operator whose business model isn't predicated on ultimately making Facebook look good. There's a reason for that, because these folks don't care about your bottom line as a business. And if they don't care about your bottom line as a business, ultimately you shouldn't care what they have to say. Using ABO in your Facebook ads is killing your performance. ABO or setting the budget at the ad set level was something we had to do 10 years ago because there wasn't an option at the campaign level. And it very closely matched how Google ads work. Now, a lot of folks that are in well-regarded circles and senior positions in the world of digital marketing learned from people who were great at email and Google and other platforms back in 2016, 2018, even 2020, because they learned from somebody else who learned from those people on how to be successful in a platform that is not the optimized CPM environment that Facebook is. So let's break down why ABO is a terrible idea. And this is gonna happen in three points. First, the idea of ABO is that you're smarter than the machine. So you're going to retroactively look at performance to decide where you're going to spend your budget. The problem is you're never gonna be smarter than Facebook. That is completely ridiculous. Second, you're looking retroactively at what? Attribution data that what? You trust so that you can predict the future? What if what's really going on is that when you have five different ad sets going across multiple campaigns, the sale that happens is whatever ad was lucky enough to be shown in that customer journey, but you're having every single one of those ad sets compete with each other. They're not discrete. They're just saying who's lucky enough today to win the lottery. Now, some are gonna be better than others, absolutely. You know which ones are gonna be the best? Broad. Broad's gonna beat out basically everything else because all the other ones are gonna get worse and worse and Broad's only ever gonna get better. The point here is you shouldn't be using audiences anyway. So the point of using ABO is completely null and void. And then you might say, well, I'm gonna use it for creative testing, which brings us to point number two. You should not be creative testing with ABO. You should be using CBO, or setting the budget at the campaign level, so that Facebook is able to say, hey, you got some new ads and you're dynamic creatives. And we're gonna see, do these ads earn spend? If they don't earn spend against your existing ads, they're not good. And you're gonna say, Oh, what, they spend like a hundred bucks a day in the performance and great. Yeah, what happens when they spend a thousand? What happens when they spend 5,000? What happens when they actually have to hold their own instead of just cherry picking the traffic at the very bottom of your funnel, which brings you far less incremental revenue? What happens when they actually have to compete? against the winners. The point here is, if you're trying to creative test with ABO, what you're doing is forcing your spend to a lot of ads that are bad. To be fair, odds are, at best, 10% of your ads in creative testing are seen as winners. So 90% of your ads are losers. How much money are you spending on really bad ads? How much harm are you doing to your relationship with Facebook? And how many people are you showing your ads to where they see that and they'll never deal with you again because you're hammering over the head with bad ads. 90% of your ads are bad. So why are you spending the majority of your money creating harm to your funnel and your relationship with Facebook? Instead, when you're using CBO and dynamic creatives, only the best ads are gonna get shown. And these are the best ads to the Facebook user experience. If those ads earn spend and don't create incremental lift for your business, then they're not good for your bottom line and you can turn them off. But if you don't know how those ads are impacting your bottom line, then you don't know if they're any good, which brings us to point number three. ABO is ultimately built on saying, what happened for me lately? And you'll see a lot of folks say, well, I do ABO testing for seven days and then bring something into my scaling campaign, which is fucking ridiculous. That makes no sense. I'm gonna spend a little bit of money on a whole bunch of ideas. What gets lucky, I'm gonna risk the future of my business on it. That's dumb. Like that doesn't hold up to any logical reasoning at all. The problem here is when you're running a whole bunch of ad sets with ABO and you're getting a lot of spend in a whole bunch of places and something does well, do you actually know that that did well? 
or that, that just got lucky on a small volume. And more importantly, do you know how that impacted your business's bottom line? You might have an ad that gets super low CPMs and has a really high CPA and you're like, man, this ad is terrible. And as soon as you turn it off, your site traffic and email open rates and your search volume tank. Why? Because that ad was amplifying your entire business model. Bad ads getting spent is often very good for your business. And if you can't point to what this ad does for your bottom line, then you have no idea how that ad is actually impacting your business. And if you are trying to run ABO or creative testing in that way or using audiences, ultimately what you're doing is creating massive instability in the front end of your business so that you can chase isolated wins where you have no confidence in the outcome, ultimately to try to say, well, this thing looks good on a report, but I have no idea how it's impacting my business, but I'm gonna use that complete lack of awareness or knowledge or understanding or confidence to scale my brand. That is the worst investment you can make and makes literally no sense. And the people that teach you how to do it don't give a damn about your bottom line. And this is a big problem. The folks that are teaching you to do this ultimately don't care about you. And that's something that you should be concerned with. If somebody's giving you really bad advice so that they look smart and they can point to one isolated win out of a hundred losses, that doesn't mean that they give a damn about you or your family. It means that they're flexing on the one isolated win they have so they can boost their ego. And it's very easy to find these people. Basically, when they start talking about their one single success of a brand that probably didn't even need them in the first place, and they're talking about their lifestyle and their success personally, that's a big red flag. When somebody can actually point to all of the wins and all of the success that they've helped other people achieve and the opportunity that those wins have given others to provide for the family and create jobs for others and give them the independence so that Facebook becomes something that takes very little time and they can work on their business and create scale and opportunity for their family so that they can create success for themselves in a low stress way. Those are the people you should be looking to. And to be fair, that's my entire message. And Facebook hack number three that you should stop doing immediately is promoting multiple offers and targeting multiple countries. Why are we doing this? What sense does this actually make? Now, believe me, I've seen the arguments about contribution margin, which by the way, is a metric you should never reference again because it's complete nonsense. And I'm trying to get the person that invented that to come on camera, but it seems like being held accountable to their words isn't something they're interested in. Here's the point. Facebook isn't Google. Facebook isn't email. You're not capitalizing on intent that already exists. You're creating it. You're not trying to build a bunch of funnels. You don't have that kind of money. Do you want to poorly do five jobs or do you want to do one job really well what's most important here is you're not spending enough money to need to promote anything that isn't your best investment when you are looking at your ads and this is one reason that we look at psm and anybody that teaches you how to run ads it's not referencing the finance department it's somebody you should never listen to again because they have no idea what they're talking about and they don't give a damn about you or your family or your company or the jobs and opportunity you can create for other people when you're promoting multiple offers or targeting different countries you're diluting the focus now remember, Facebook is a machine learning algorithm. So what are you teaching? Would you like to teach five employees to do mediocre work where they're not complimentary at all, knowing that one of those employees makes you a lot more money than everybody else? Or would you like to say, well, this is the thing that makes me the most amount of money. This is the thing where I know when I'm gonna get future money. I'm buying future cash flow at a profit in a way that I can project and I have confidence in. What's the single best investment for your business? Why are you spending your money anywhere else? And one of the things that I get from people all the time is like, well, oh, we gotta keep promoting different offers in my business. It's different. No, it's not. No, your business is the exact same as everybody else's. You're trying to acquire future cash flow. Let me ask you this. If you can spend a dollar to make a nickel and make a dime and make a quarter, every time you spend money to get a nickel, it's costing you 20 cents. Now, that's all things being equal. What if you say, well, I'm just gonna go after the thing with the highest ROAS, I'm gonna get the thing with the most opportunity. If you can make 10 sales a day where you make a quarter, or you can make 100 sales a day where you make a nickel, making the nickel might be better for you if you know that's gonna turn into five more nickels over the next three months. The point is you need to understand your cash flow. What is the single best investment for the finance department of your business. Because Facebook ads are not about selling things. 
Facebook ads are about amplifying a business model where you understand the monetization of attention to turn it into future cash flow at a profit. When you're running Google, you can absolutely chase down the individual products. So when somebody's looking for that thing, you have a search campaign for it. Totally do it. When you're running email, have a drip for each one of the products that you have. Absolutely. Totally do it. These are intent and inventory based platforms. You need to capitalize on it so somebody else does. But Facebook is far more like television. You don't see Nike running ads for every single product that they sell. No, they run ads for the Jordan. The point here is find what most effectively earns somebody attention that gets them to want to buy something where you know what that customer journey looks like. And until you run out of opportunity with that customer journey where literally any other customer journey is equally as good, you don't need to focus on it. If you focus your campaigns to say, when I spend a dollar, make a quarter, and then you 5X, 10X your spend, and it ultimately comes down to, well, now I'm only making 10 cents instead of 25. Now that thing where you make 10 cents becomes something you might want to even think about. So if you're promoting multiple offers, understand that one of them is the best for your business. All the other ones are complete liability. You're not trying to sell everything. You're not trying to be everywhere. You're not trying to make money in one place and lose it everywhere else. Spend your money in the place that's going to get you the best return. Facebook is an investment banking machine that creates intent and does market research to amplify an existing business model. It's not a salesperson. And somebody that tells you that it is, again, has no fucking clue what they're talking about and doesn't give a damn about your bottom line. Their advice is gonna cost you your future. This advice will let you create opportunities for others. That's the difference. So what do we learn here today? First, using Advantage Plus and cost caps makes your Facebook report look real good right up until you don't have a business anymore because it creates harm as a matter of standard operating procedure in a way that shrivels up your funnel and ultimately impairs the ability for you to use Facebook the way the engineering department designed it, which is to amplify your business. Now, there are use cases for it. If you are entry level into Facebook, it will make a D minus account a C plus. If you're great at Facebook, it'll make your A minus account a C plus. Don't use it if you're legitimately confident in what you're doing and competent at executing the platform. Unless you are using it at massive scale to specifically create ad fatigue and attrition, which is absolutely something you can do if you're struggling to test new creators because you have something so good, nothing else will get spent. That is a great use case. I also have a wonderful video on why you should be using Advantage Plus, but you're using it all wrong. And I think that video can be found right there. All right, second, anyone that tells you to use ABO is somebody that you never need to listen to again because they fundamentally don't understand how Facebook works. It's not about forcing your ideas onto other people so that you feel good while you lose money and depreciate assets. It's about investing into machine learning so that it gets smarter and smarter over time so that you have to do less and less work to make more and more money. Using ABO, where you retroactively look at data that is incomplete that you don't trust anyway, that is highly, highly suspect in its integrity because there's also a million other things going on and you can't point to actually what's happening is a terrible way to manage your investment and try to predict the future. You're not smarter than Facebook. Facebook isn't Google. Don't use 2013 Google tactics on a Facebook platform and then complain when it's not working out. And if somebody tells you otherwise, you can go ahead and fire them or give them the finger or unfollow them on Twitter because they don't give a damn about you, your family, or the jobs and opportunity you can create for other people. And lastly, Stop promoting multiple offers and going to separate countries. There are specific things that are best for your business. Now that being said, there are use cases for this. I'm not saying don't run DPA ads. You should, that's a different business objective. And I'm not saying you shouldn't run rebuttal upsells. You should, if you can afford it. That is a luxury problem where you can now say, there are two good investments for me to make. And depending on the time of the year, I want short money or I want long money. I want high profit or I want high volume. 
These are things that you can evaluate. And as an investment banker, you can choose what you want to invest in. But you need to have the investment portfolio, finance department view on where you're spending your money. Otherwise, what you're doing is working really hard to invest a lot of money into depreciating assets where you're competing with yourself to ultimately cost yourself far more money than you're making because instead of investing in the best investment for your business, you're chasing the machine to teach you to do a lot of things really poorly. That makes no fucking sense. That's the reason your CPMs are going up. That's the reason that your CAC is rising. The bottom line is if you've seen your CPMs or CPAs or customer acquisition costs go up in the last two years, it's probably because you're not using Facebook the way it was designed. Facebook has not had any major change since 2018. I was a part of how Facebook rewrote the code to do all of this. I'm telling it to you not as a supposition, but as somebody that helped make it work. This is how the system was designed to be used. They've told you this for years. But anybody that disagrees with this, either A, doesn't give a damn about you, knows that they're causing harm and is just trying to profit off of you anyway, or B, has no idea what they're talking about, in which case you shouldn't trust them to begin with. That all being said, if you want more information about my standard operating procedures, my frameworks, how I manage businesses so that I can get operators down to an hour a week inside the Facebook ad account so they can work on their business instead of failing in their ads manager, check out down below the link for the Facebook Ads MBA program. You'll also see links below for Disruptor School, Disruptor Agency, as well as links to get on consulting calls with me so we can dive into the back end of your business, merch store, a whole bunch of other stuff. Stuff. And once again, I know you can be literally anywhere on the internet right now and you chose to be here and I want to say thank you for that. And this is a blessing to me to earn your attention. And what I hope to do is give you the confidence and skills and knowledge that you need so that you can provide for your family and create opportunity for others. That's what this is all about. This is about joy and opportunity. It's not about me trying to act smart to abuse your bottom line to line my bank account. That's what separates me from almost everybody else. So that being said, if you're here, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to the podcast, give me five stars, download, share with your friends, give the algorithm all the signals in the world that you love this thing. And until next time, I'll see you on the internet.